What if I told you that you can animate anything in DaVinci Resolve with just one click? No, I'm not exaggerating. It's now possible with the custom effect we've created specifically for Resolve. All you have to do is go to your effect library, drag the effect onto anything you want to animate, and instantly gain control over the animation in and out, the timing, as well as the type of animation. In this video, I'll show you how to install this powerful effect and how to get the most out of it. So if you're ready to elevate your editing game, let's jump right into it. You can download the pack by clicking the link in the description below. It will give you this zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. In the folder, you'll find a couple of things, the license, the installation instruction, the DRFX file, and the font. Please make sure to install all the fonts, otherwise the title will not work because DaVinci will not know what font to use. So select all the font and then double click on them to start the installation process. Then you can go over to the DRFX file and double click on it to prompt open that window, offering you to install the pack. Just select install or overwrite if you already have the pack installed and you're just making an update. Then we can move over to DaVinci Resolve. Once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to the effect library, then effect, video to studio, and then here you will find the free starter pack with the auto animation. You can then just drag that effect onto your video clip, image, or text. And now, as you can see, you will have an animation in and an animation out. You can control those parameters right there in the inspector. There is a couple of things that, that we can adjust to get the result that we want. First off here, we have the animation length in second. By default, it's half a second, but we can choose to modify that to, for example, here, one second, and now it will be one second instead of half a second. You can always double click on any parameter to reset that parameter to the default value. So the second parameter that you can modify to adjust your animation is here the animation in style. So you have different type of animation you can choose from. You have no animation, zoom in, zoom out, pan left, pan right, slide up, slide down, and fade in. Each of those animation will give you a different uh, style. So as you can see right now, slide down, it will slide uh, from top to bottom. Then we have, for example, here pan left, uh, it will go from left to right, um, etc., etc. If you choose, for example, here none, you will have no animation at the in animation and you will retain your animation out. This is because those drop down are independent from each other. So here we have the animation in and then here we have the animation out. So you can just select whatever animation you want for both the in and the out. If you select none for both, as you can see, you will have no animation both at the in and out point. So right now I'm just gonna reset them to the default value by double click on them. And now we have a zoom in animation and a fade out animation. Then the last animation parameter that we can adjust is right here, the curve. So you can play around with the in and out curve. Right now it's back, but you can select to have none, which will give you a linear curve. So as you can see here, we have an animation that looks linear. My favorite will be to use Expo or Cubic. Those are more smooth out curve that, are, that will be closer to a S curve. And as you can see here, that gives you like a smoother type of animation in my opinion. So you can just play around with those to really get the effect that you want. For example, also here we have bounce style animation. It's gonna be better probably here with one second to give it the time to happen. And as you can see, we have a slight bounce happening when the image is coming into frame. Then lastly, not related to the animation, but the size and position. We got the size and position control right there. We can just control the overall size of your image and then displace it with uh, the position right there. It's better to do it right there directly in the auto animation effect control rather than doing it right there in the video because the pivot point will always stay central. So here, as you can see, the animation is happening from the center of that image. If I were to reset all those parameters and do it right here, so here we're gonna do the same thing, reduce the size and adjust the position. Now, if I play it, as you can see, there is a slight displacement happening. It's coming from the center of the frame rather than from the center of the image. So that's why it's preferable to do it directly here in effect compared to here in video. Now we've done all that on an image, but you can also do that on a text. So here, if I were to delete that image and then go to title, take a text plus, for example, if we make a few modification to that text plus, let's say we just rename it DaVinci Resolve, 
and then we make a quick change to the font, for example. We can then animate that by going back to free starter pack, dragging the auto animation on it, and now it will be animated. So you can use that also on any text element or all the fusion component that you want to animate quickly. Uh, that's just like a fast way to do it. So I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.